Hi, my name is Mike Smith. I'm a Principal Solution Engineer with Salesforce. Today, we will be walking through the Salesforce Platform Encryption HSM-based Key Derivation Architecture. Salesforce Shield Platform Encryption is based on a number of key principles, including the ability to strongly encrypt data at rest natively in the Salesforce App Cloud, giving customers control over the life cycle of their encryption keys while preserving critical business functionality. And all of this is done without requiring the customer to provide any additional hardware or software. In a typical scenario, a user would be sitting at a desktop using the browser to enter data. Some of this information might include sensitive data. Therefore, according to some organizations' information security policies or third-party agreements, some of this sensitive data may need to be encrypted when it is persisted to the Salesforce multi-tenant database. Also, files and attachments containing sensitive information might need to be encrypted at rest according to the same policy conditions. This data could also come into a Salesforce org through other channels, such as through a mobile device or through the API. The application servers in the Salesforce data centers serve as gateways, intercepting requests coming in, determining which data elements should be encrypted or decrypted, and then applying the appropriate encryption credentials. We often get the question from customers, where are my encryption keys stored? The answer is that the final org-specific AES-256 keys used to encrypt customer data are never persisted to disk. Instead, they are derived on demand from several individual secrets generated by logically and physically separated hardware security modules and then delivered to the application's Java tier when required for encryption and decryption of data. Encryption keys are derived using a number of inputs, including a tenant secret that is generated and rotated on demand by the customer and a master secret that is generated and rotated by Salesforce with every new release, approximately once every four months. Let's talk first about the master secret that is generated by Salesforce, and then we'll go into how customers control their own key lifecycle with the tenant secret. During each Salesforce release, roughly three times per year, specific named security officers, of whom there are only a handful in the world, walk into a bank vault and access a safety deposit box to generate the master secret for that release. Using a dedicated, highly secured laptop, the security officers retrieve from the safety deposit box an air-gapped hardware security module, or HSM, which they connect to the secure laptop. This master HSM is a SafeNet Luna G5 manufactured by Gemalto. FIPS 140-2 hardware compliant USB device that generates per-release secrets and secret wrapping keys and signs the public keys of embedded HSMs. These master HSMs are stored in geographically isolated safety deposit boxes around the world. The security officer then, using the secure laptop with HSM, generates a number of items that are used throughout the process including a release-specific master secret, a master salt, a tenant wrapping key, and some other keys used throughout the process. We'll come back to these in a moment. Key derivation servers are load-balanced servers sitting in each Salesforce data center. Each key derivation server, or KDS, has embedded Luna PCIe HSM cards manufactured by Gemalto. These HSMs are FIPS 140-2 compliant and common criteria EAL4 Plus validated. The KDS is where organization-specific tenant secrets may be generated and encrypted, and where the data encryption keys are derived. Back in the bank vault, a master wrapping key has also been generated using the HSM. It is encrypted separately with the master and embedded HSM public encryption keys and in turn used to encrypt the remainder of the per-release secrets used to derive data encryption keys. This way, each embedded HSM is able to securely access the master wrapping key for each release, 
which it uses to access the rest of the per-release secrets needed for key derivation. The private keys in each pair are accessible only inside their respective HSMs. The various keys and secrets are then stored on a secure device for distribution to key derivation servers leveraging a release management mechanism and are distributed to the Salesforce file system where they can only be decrypted by the key derivation servers. And again, this happens once per release. Let's look now at how customers control the life cycle of the data encryption keys. It starts with the generation of the tenant secret. This is a key input to the encryption keys, and by giving customers control of the tenant secret, they control the life cycle of the encryption keys. It starts with the chief information security officer, or the chief compliance officer, or someone who has been designated for your company to maintain the Manage Encryption Keys user permission for your Salesforce org. In point-and-click fashion, this user specifies when a new tenant secret should be generated. This could also be done through the API, so you could create a batch job, for example, to rotate your tenant secret on a regular schedule. The request to generate a new tenant secret goes to the application server. The application server then sends an authenticated request over a secure channel to the key derivation server, where, using its FIPS 140-2 hardware-compliant HSMs, an org-specific tenant secret is auto-generated and encrypted using the per-release tenant secret wrapping key and then returned securely to the app server, who stores it encrypted in the database. This tenant secret is a 256-bit value that will later be used as input to the data encryption key. When appropriate, the company's security officer can then archive, export for safekeeping, or destroy tenant secrets, or re-import an exported tenant secret, according to your company's data privacy or security policies. As of the Winter 17 release, Salesforce introduced the ability for customers to upload their own tenant secrets to the platform. Popularly known as Bring Your Own Keys, or BYOK, this service raises the bar for customers that want to have greater control and role in managing the encryption key lifecycle. We've already illustrated how many platform encryption customers use Salesforce's built-in key management service to generate their tenant secret within the Salesforce infrastructure. Customers can now choose to generate the tenant secret that is used to derive the final data encryption key outside of Salesforce and securely bring it into their orgs using a certificate-based upload. BYOK is just another option for customers who want further separation of how the individual keys are created and maintained. This can be done using the customer's own key management infrastructure, such as on-premise hardware security modules or other key management mechanisms. Open source libraries, such as OpenSSL or Bouncy Castle, or key brokers, such as AWS Key Management Service, Vormetric, or Netscope for more simplified management. After a customer supplied tenant secret, which is 256 bits in size, is encrypted with a public RSA key that is extracted from a self signed or CA signed BYOK certificate, then padded using OAEP padding, and then encoded in standard base 64, it can be uploaded to Salesforce by your security officer or someone who holds the Manage Encryption Keys user permission for your Salesforce org. An SHA-256 hash of the plain text tenant secret, encoded in standard base 64, is also uploaded. This encrypted tenant secret and hashed plain text tenant secret are then sent to the encryption service, which passes them to the key derivation server. The key derivation server derives the organization-specific BYOK-derived encryption key to unwrap the certificate's private key. The tenant secret is decrypted using the BYOK certificate's private key, then hashed using SHA-256 and compared to the SHA-256 hash provided by the customer. If the hashes match, the key derivation server encrypts the tenant secret with the per-release tenant wrapping key then sends it back to the encryption service, which stores it, encrypted, in the database to be used as input for final key derivation.
which will take place as needed inside the key derivation servers. These uploads can also take place using the API, as can additional operations such as archiving, exporting, or destroying tenant secrets. Let's see what happens when a user enters data that should be encrypted at rest. First, your security officer will designate, as a matter of policy, which standard or custom fields should be encrypted using Salesforce's point-and-click interface, or the API. Then, when a user enters data, based on the metadata that describes a particular field, Salesforce will check to see if the encryption key resides in memory. The first time this happens, of course, it will not. So the encryption service will send a secure request to the key derivation server to derive the encryption key before sending the data to the database. The key derivation server, or KDS, will then use the release-specific master secret along with the tenant secret and other inputs, such as the master salt, length of the key, which is 256 bits, and number of iterations, and generate the encryption key. The number of iterations is set to 15,000. The data encryption key, or DEK, secured and wrapped with a dedicated application server's transit key, is then sent to the application server, where it is cached in memory to serve future requests. Shield Platform Encryption uses the Java Cryptography Extension, or JCE, to encrypt and decrypt data. Specifically, it uses the Advanced Encryption Standard, AES-256, in CBC mode with randomized IV in PKCS5 for padding. The JCE class, Secure Random, is used to generate the IV. The data is then stored, encrypted, at rest, in the Salesforce database. The process is similar when it comes time to decrypt data that has been encrypted at rest. At this point, the user has found the record they need to retrieve, perhaps using the Salesforce Global Search, where the search index is also encrypted at rest. First, the record is retrieved from the database, but before it is presented to the user, certain fields may need to be decrypted. If any fields need to be decrypted, Based on the metadata associated with those fields, the encryption service first checks in memory in the least recently used, or LRU cache, to see if the org-specific data encryption key is present. Each derived encryption key is flushed from memory, as other org-specific encryption keys are dynamically generated to support other customers and or when the app servers are rebooted. If the key is found, the data is decrypted and returned to the user. If not, a request is sent to the key derivation server for the key that was used to encrypt the original data. Using the master secret that was in effect when the data was originally encrypted, along with the tenant secret in effect at that time, the encryption key that will be used to decrypt the data is generated. This data encryption key is returned securely to the application server where it is stored securely in memory to serve future requests and is used to decrypt the data before returning it to the user. So that is how platform encryption encrypts data at rest, natively within the Salesforce platform while giving customers control of the key lifecycle while preserving critical business functionality without requiring any on-premise hardware or software. For more detail on this topic, including how Salesforce encrypts search indexes and preserves critical related functionality, Read the Shield Platform Encryption Architecture White Paper, available on the internet through www.salesforce.com. Follow me on Twitter at moremikesmith. Thank you for watching.